bigger roots that are far out are coming back. Roots that are crossing like this are going. And we want everything to ultimately be radial and getting smaller out away from the trunk. So that's what we're working towards. So, one quick note, um, I know you've probably fast forwarded through all of this, but if you see me keeping anything that would be otherwise um, something I said I was going to get rid of, like a crossing route, um, I'm thinking about putting this on the board and trying to lay out the roots in the Abihara method. And I want everything straight out as much as I can, but I do want, you know, areas like this to eventually fuse and, you know, the base to be even all the way out. And so if there are some that are close to the trunk that are possibly crossing, I may leave them for a year or two and hope that they thicken and fuse into the adjacent root and then we, we get the same effect, right? So that's kind of why I'm leaving some like this area right here is full of, uh, it's a mess, but I believe that this mess will look good in a couple of years. It doesn't look good now, but I think that it will if left to grow for a couple of years. So um, what I've got left to do um, I've got a few of these roots that are growing from the underside and so I've got just a couple that I need to level out the base and once I do that this will be ready to go onto the board and we'll begin arranging the roots. We've cut most of the crossing roots. We've cut the thick, longer roots back. And we still have some crossing roots up close, but my hope is that if I let the, the tree grow um, all year, they'll thicken, they'll start to fuse at the base. And that may take two or three years, but ultimately we want um, branches, trees like, uh, branches, trees, roots like um, these that are not um, perfect, have a lot of busyness going on. Hoping they thicken and then they'll fuse and that area will be completely fused. So that's why some of these that are um, not exactly clean are going to be left in there. So the next step uh, before I put it onto the board, and I'm realizing this is probably going to be a two or three part video because this is going to be long, but I'll try to release them uh, one after the other, is uh, we talked about the root graft earlier at the beginning of the video. So. I want you to look at the root and you can see why I picked it. It's a really cool, fat, weird looking root. All right. So it is this root right here. And if I can get it close enough to the camera without it messing up, it is kind of fat, uh, kind of bulbous a little bit, but it's got some really nice movement, right? 
Uh, so that's a nice, a nice root that we added. And this gap was completely empty last spring. We filled it with that. It has some nice offshoots that will hopefully grow a little bit fused with the others. And over time, we'll, we'll fill in probably this gap first and then this over time. So knowing that that root is good and fused and ready to go, we can remove the uh, tree portion. And um, this was the thread graft method. So last year before, um, before everything butted out, I got the video on it, but I drilled a hole from down here up through here and then threaded this tree through and we sealed both sides. We held it in place with a little tiny piece of metal, which is inside the tree now, and we let it grow. And um, as the tree grew, it fused uh, more importantly on this side because we want to keep uh, the root, which you can't quite see. But um, now that it is fused, we can just remove this and uh, cover it with some cut paste. And in a year or so, you will never know that was there. So we're going to start with some of the big cutters. And you should probably sterilize your tools if you use them in any kind of dirt before you use them on your branches. Uh, so don't uh, hate on me too much, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this. I'm going to start with these and then I'll use um, some small knob cutters to make that cut flush with the rest of the trunk. So we're just going to first get rid of it. And then toss that over there. We'll clean this up. So let me get you at a good angle so that you can already be. Yeah. So we're just gonna clean this up so that it's smooth with the rest of the trunk. Like that. And then we can come in on the sides. And how does that look in from your side? Almost there, but not quite. Right. So, come in with the knob cutters, hold the tree steady. And I believe that while there is a little bit sticking out here, if I turn it around so you can see it from my side, it's not quite as much. And so I believe that if we let this callus over, it should be uh, actually help with the thickness of the base a little bit and help transition to uh, to the bottom without being kind of out of place. And even, even if there's a little knob scar here, that only adds a little bit of character, so it's okay. So, just gonna take some cut paste, homemade, artisanal, vegan cut paste. We just want to make sure that we cover the edges of the wound both to prevent bacteria and to keep it from drying out while it heals, especially since it's not uh, it's not active. The tree's not budded out yet, so it's going to be more susceptible to uh, drying out and dying back. Okay, so that's done. Make sure the roots don't dry out. I'm just going to mist them real quick. Okay, I'll tell you what, I am not sure if I want to board this and uh, plant it, arrange the roots in the Abihara method or not. Um, you guys let me know in the comments, yes or no. Right now this is going to go uh, just kind of on a board back into the ground, make sure I cover the roots. Um, 
and it'll probably be moved anyway because I am building new growing beds. So um, this doesn't have to be immediate, but let me know, yes or no, if you want to see me do the Ebihara method on this tree. And if so, I will uh, get it back up whenever I go to move it and we'll plan it out.